Well, we are just over one week away from the NFL draft, and we've been meeting a lot of the guys going to make up this class, but this is one that I've been looking forward to a while because he is very much one of our own. And he, of course, is a native of Ellicott City. He went to Gilman and had a hell of a career at Stanford. He's a defensive lineman and someone who I think would make a lot of sense for the Baltimore Ravens, but nobody asked me. He is Thomas Booker, and he's with us now here on GCR. Thomas, it's Glenn in Baltimore. It's great to chat with you, man. Thank you for taking the time for us. And great to be here. I've been super excited to get to talk to you the entire week. Dude, you are a really impressive human being, my friend. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I was digging in on you. How did the Chinese Honor Society come about? How it, a lot of dudes do a lot of things. Yeah. I have not talked to a lot of people that were part of the Chinese Honor Society over the years. Yeah, so uh, interesting story about that. Um, I actually took that my freshman and sophomore year at Gilman. Um, that was one of the only classes that they let us take at uh, our surrounding girls' school. So I took it at Roland Park uh, Country School for about two years. If you're from Baltimore, you know the whole yep. private school deal. Yep. Um, so I took that for two years. I enjoyed it. And the funny thing is, I also took Spanish. Um, but I'm not the one with the language gene in my family, actually. Uh, I'm going to do a little little humble brag of my sister. She just actually got married this past weekend. Um, but uh, she actually is fluent in both Mandarin and wow. Spanish. Wow. Yeah. So the reason why I even picked Chinese was because she's 10 years older than me. So we actually took a trip out to China um, while she was in an immersion program and uh, came to see her. She could only speak Chinese the entire time. So I might wow. have the society, but she's got the fluency bad. So I'm gonna give her that one. Okay, so like how much could, could you say, um, like, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of something. I, uh, could you in Chinese say, I can't wait to hear my name called next week? <laughs> so unfortunately it's been about um, six years since uh, I took that class. Uh, all right. Um, and right now I just remember how to say uh, my mother and my father with a baba and with a mama. Wow. That's what I know how to say currently. Um, Bro. Uh, Spanish, I could give you a little bit more. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, my sister's wow. definitely the one that got the language gene. I tried to do my best. How much pressure, like I was looking through, you know, not just your sister, your entire family, like has everybody's gone to Ivy League schools or Duke or, you know, places like that. How much pressure did you feel growing up? Like, man, I, I got to live up to a really incredible standard here. Yeah, no, no, it, it was an incredible standard set um, for sure. But there was never any kind of like negative pressure. Um, it was all kind of just, you know, everybody in my family are competitors. Um, they enjoy being the best at what they do, whether that's academically or athletically. And we push each other to greatness in a positive way. You know, it's not a tear down or cool. down the pressure. So, you know, I felt like um, I had a lot of resources afforded to me as a kid. So I just had to use them to the best of my ability, you know? So naturally like that, that led me to some pretty cool places, but uh, you're right. Uh, I had a lot to live up to for sure. So I'm glad they set an incredible example from an early age for me. You're doing all right with that. You're doing okay. Trying to, trying to. Your, your father was a football player. Yes. Um, did you always know growing up that it was a path that you wanted to take or were you almost trying to avoid it a little bit? Like where, how did football work with you in your life given his background? Yeah, so so I played a bunch of sports when I like as I was growing up. Um, my first sport was actually tennis um, because okay. my dad my dad's first sport was actually tennis as well. Really? Yeah. So he played outside linebacker at the Uni University of Wisconsin in like the mid to early '80s. So you know he was like a, a six foot two, you know, two hundred thirty pound dude moving across the tennis court um, with a racket. So that yeah. was definitely a different sight to see. Uh, but for me, like it was kind of just a natural progression. You know, I went from tennis to baseball, to basketball. And part of the reason why I didn't play football until middle school was because my parents didn't want me playing with kids that were like two or three years older than me because I weighed a lot. So okay. until okay. I could get to the age where I could play in unlimited leagues, um, they kind of helped me out. So I started playing in sixth grade and it kind of just took off from there. And I think my dad knew from a very early age that I was going to grow a football body. So he's like, you know, you know, basketball, all those other sports are cool, but we know where the end game is. And that's that's what it ended up being. What did you weigh in at the combine, by the way? Uh 301. 301, and you're six four, right? Yep, six four, three oh one. So yes, yeah, sir. that's a football body. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, see, like, <laughs> that qualifies. Right. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It'd be really hard as six four, three hundred pounds to move on a basketball court. Like it would yeah. just be really yeah, a little bit. That's that's a real tweener right there. You got the higher <laughs> point guard, but the, the size of like Shaq. So yeah, no. Yeah, the no. the age of the Charles Barkley is is kind of over in the NBA, unfortunately. No, nah, that's 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 the truth. I mean, for me, I was big on like 
I like being able to to be in the paint and everything, but also sure. come out and like lock up a guard from the perimeter. That was what I love. Like the the fact that I'm much bigger than you, but I'm still yep. staying with you. Like yep. that was a big ego boost for me. So I think that's where I got some of my quick feet from. He is Thomas Booker. He's with us here on Glenn Clark Radio. Thomas, do you remember a moment that made you fall in love with football? Do you remember a, a game or an interaction with somebody or anything like that where you were like, oh no, this this is this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm all about. Yeah, so I played I played tight end um, really early in my career. So I was really always a tight end defensive end um, going through like middle school and, and into high school. And I remember like in sixth grade when I, I scored my first touchdown uh, playing tight end and just the feeling of going up and getting the ball and like the 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 exhilaration that you feel when you score and your, your teammates coming to embrace you and all that. That was my first memory. It was muddy outside. It was rainy, it was classic Maryland weather. Uh, yeah. And, uh, classic and, Maryland. Yeah. And it was probably 90 degrees the next day. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. You can't rely on what it's going to be day to day, but that was my first memory, but there've been so many other ones, you know, from high school, um, Gilman McDonald football game, the hundredth game, yeah. you know, to, I had one, one of my favorite touchdowns I ever had, um, was at Gilman. I forget the team that we were playing against. I'm rolling out, uh, to the sideline. I catch a ball one handed. I toe tap to stay in bounds. The dudes that were right next to me thought I was out of bounds because I was too big to stay in. And I just ran it right down into the end zone. I still have a clip of that on my huddle. Awesome. So if you want to go look it up and see, it's on oh, tape. Um, that's cool. No, nah, but there have been so many moments offensively and defensively. Had one um, at Gilman where I came through. I was I was, I was being read um, on like a read option. And I got into the backfield so quick that I tackled both the running back and the quarterback at the same time. That is the coolest play. I've seen I've only seen that a couple times in my life, right? Yeah. Like there was yeah. there was a, a guy that plays Antoine Perez was a safety at Maryland years ago, and yeah. he had a play like that along the side. It's my oh my god, it's the coolest play in all of football, right? Nah, you you feel like you feel like the man after right. you come after that. You're like, okay, <laughs> you couldn't even read me. Like I was too fast for you to read. Yeah. Oh, that's so dope. Oh, that's so cool, man. That yeah. is awesome. Um, you, you know, you mentioned obviously your time, did, were, were you, a, I, and I say this knowing you're about to have a new favorite football team and I understand all, I, I know the politics of all of this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you grow up as a Ravens fan? Were you a football fan? Were, did you go to games? You know, were, were, was that the way that your family operated or was it more like, you know, I hate hearing about how many Cowboys fans there were that lived in our area. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So when I was young, actually, I was a big uh, Brady fan. I was a big Patriots fan. Ooh, cool. And I, uh, I remember I had a really, like, traumatic day, that Super Bowl, where their perfect season got like ruined by nice. the Giants. Yeah. Yeah, I remember having my Brady jersey on, and I was in tears. I, yeah. I've always been, I've always been a big competitor um, in whatever I do, you know, whether it's a sport or whether it's, like, Monopoly or Scrabble. So seeing, like, my guys go out like that in the last possible game was tough. Um, and then I kind of migrated back to my roots uh, as a Baltimore Ravens fan. And, you know, I have everybody's jersey. I got Ed Reed's number 20 jersey. I got Hello Yonata's jersey, Terrell Suggs, Lamar now, you know. So uh, did, did you get chances to meet any of these guys over the years? Did you? Um, shoot, I'm trying to think. Uh, no, I have not. I don't think so. Um, okay. But, yeah, so it's actually funny. My parents, they got to go to one of the Super Bowls and they got to go to one of the parties. And um, they were like meeting like Gronkowski and my mom, like she has no idea who these people are. <laughs> so she's sending me pictures like, who is this? I'm like, mom, like, come on. Like, it's kind of a big deal. Like that's right. kind of somebody you should deal. know. Right? Yeah, it's definitely an undoubtedly top three tight end ever. So yeah, yeah. Correct. hopefully you know who that is. But, were, but yeah. were, you, were you a Ravens fan again in time to be on the right side of root? So I'm thinking of the 12, the, the AFC championship game. Yes. So yes. you were rooting for the Ravens at that point. You were, yes. okay. I right. mean, I had made my transition. I had, uh, I had matured. Um, we'll I, take I had it. gotten back to my roots. Yeah. Now, of course, obviously you get drafted by the Patriots next week. You're a Patriots fan again. That's correct. The, and you always were, frankly. Correct, <laughs> correct, correct. So yeah. it works either which way. It's an interesting pairing to have the Patriots first and the Ravens, but yeah. it happens. We'll, we'll give you a pass for that, especially if you end up back in Baltimore. Thomas Booker with us here on GCR. Thomas, you mentioned you were a tight end. Um, was again, was there a point at which you knew like D line is the spot for me? And I and I asked that because I want to ask a little bit more about the fit. And I know the answer is, Hey, whatever a, a coach says they want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. But it, is there a particular spot that you say, I think at the next level, I could be a dominant, you know, nose tackle, or I could be a dominant. Like, do you have a spot that you say, that's the spot that I think I could dominate at? Yeah. So to answer your question first about like, you know, I played tight end and defensive end yep. throughout, you know, middle school and high school, kind of when did I realize the defense was it for me? 
I realized, so I had a conversation with my dad. My dad obviously played defense. He played outside linebacker. And uh, he always used to talk to me about, like, the hammer and nail relationship of offense and defense, right? Um, defense is always going to be the hammer. An offense is always going to be the nail. And you have to decide which one you wanted to be. And it became pretty clear to me playing football uh, that I wanted to be the hammer and yeah. not the nail. Yeah. And I think also for me, like, offense is great, like, when you have the ball in your hand, blah, blah, blah. But um, I don't know. It's just different. Like, defense is so much more aggressive. You know, it's, a, it's where you get to, to let the athleticism just go. It's not as kind of like um, calculated and everything. It is to an extent, but at the end of the day, you need to put something in the ground every single play, right? Um, so I, I appreciated that about defense. There's something Pretty really fun about that, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And let and just the violence of it, you know, on a play-to-play -play basis and the way the defenses have to play together and the bond that you have with your brothers where you guys are all reacting to a play that you don't know and finding out a way to make it work every single time. So that's definitely what I would say. And then on the, uh, the kind of positional point, you know, I played a lot of positions at Stanford. Um, I played from zero technique, um, some of our nickel stuff to five technique um, and some of our other things like pass rush. And I think for me, the, the couple of positions that I think I can really succeed at, I think one of my biggest points um, and strengths in this draft process is my versatility, scheme versatility. Um, so I think in the three, four, I'd be a great, you know, N, four technique, five technique. And in a four, three, you know, the three technique, two I, I think those are really, really good spots for me. Okay. And I've shown all of it on tape. So I think I've got some versatility, but if I had to pick, you know, 4-3, being a defensive tackle, 3 technique, 2-I, and 3-4 being an end at a 4 or 5. All right. I like that. I like that, man. Thomas Booker with us here on GCR. Um, you know, it's funny listening to you. You remind me a lot. There's another Gilman guy. I don't know if you know Brandon Copeland at all. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so just listening to you, because I remember talking to him when he was at this point in this stage of his, and obviously what an amazing run he has had continuing from undrafted all the way to this point in his life. And I yep. remember thinking like, you have your S together so much more than the average person that I talk to at this stage in, in their life, right? Like, and I, and I say that because I, I wonder when you talk about the violence of it, you're such a smart person. Do you reconcile it all like that, that violence, you know, and, and, and the, and what a violent game, what it does to a brain, right? Like, is it difficult at all for you? Are you the type of person that's already thought about post football type of stuff and what your life is going to look like? And how do you reconcile all, all of those things, Tom? Yeah, no, there's definitely kind of a duality towards it. But the way I look at it is like, you know, I'm a pretty like measured and reserved dude. And when you talk to me like day to day, like I do get riled up, but oh, I keep it in the frame, right? Yeah. Uh, football is kind of my one place where I don't have to keep it in the frame. You let it out, yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone needs their outlet. The people who are extremely loud and whatever, they need their quiet time, right? The people who are the other way need the, the opposite. So football is kind of that outlet for all that like pure aggression and violence that I don't get to do in a day to day that wouldn't be acceptable. Um, but yeah, no, from a post football sense, the reason why I went to Stanford, um, partially, you know, obviously the intellectual brutality moniker, the way that they play with their front seven, that was something I was attracted to, but I was also attracted to the prestige of the, of the university. The fact that it was so close to Silicon Valley, right. Yeah. I'm very interested in technology, probably more from the business side. Okay. So, um, that's why I got my economics degree is because it's a degree that allows you to think, you know, in a large scale sense about, you know, market problems and stuff. So that gives you a lot of different venues and lanes to go into. So right now, obviously I'm focused on this career because this is what I want to do for as long course, as I can. But I know that, you know, the connections that I've made at Stanford and the skills that I've learned and, you know, the way that I've learned how to learn and how to adapt to different things is going to help me in whatever kind of uh, role or lane that I try to go into, you know, post football. That's awesome, man. That is incredible to hear. All right. Um, have, did you ever allow yourself to dream about like putting the purple? I know you had a visit with the Ravens and I, again, knowing whatever it's going to be, if it's Seattle, you're going to be the most excited you're ever going to be in your life. But yeah. did you allow yourself to dream about like what that feeling would be for it to be here and them and your family and everybody being here. Have you allowed yourself to even just have a moment to think about that possibility? I think it's inevitable, you know, obviously being like a, a hometown kid to think about putting on that purple and black and gold. So, I mean, the same way that when I got to Stanford, like what used to happen to me is like, I got to Stanford and we do like our, our team run or something regular. And I would look down and I'd see like an S on my pants. Like I got right now, I have a Stanford Pro Day shirt on, right? Yep. And it was just surreal for me because it was something I wanted to do for so long and I was doing it. So I feel like the exact same thing would happen to like the nth degree, you know, with any NFL team, but specifically uh, like the hometown guys, you know, just seeing the story history of that franchise and the fact that you're doing this in front of 
you know, people that have seen you grow your entire life and have helped you grow, you know, that would be, I don't even understand how to describe it. It wouldn't even be surreal. It would be, it would be unreal, honestly. I mean, you wore their jerseys. Like, you yeah. had, you had someone, now somebody else, some other kid's going to put your jersey on. Yeah. Oh, man, that's, it's intense. It's really intense. Yeah, and, and it's crazy because, like, I saw that kind of progression at Gilman, too. You know, I, I've been, I was at Gilman for 13 years, so I was there from, yeah. you know, preschool to, yep. you know, I became a senior. And one of the big traditions at Gilman is, like, when we're playing the Gilman McDonough game, um, the, the football players, the seniors, they have uh, some of the little kids and they walk them up to the stage before they do the big pep rally. So I was, I went from being walked to wow. being the person walking, Wow! you know, so man. seeing that kind of progression is, is kind of similar. That is really powerful, man. That is a really powerful thing. Um, the thing that you want to do for somebody the first time, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you got a little NIL money this year. I don't know, but it was, have you had an opportunity to do something or have you thought about something that you want to do for somebody either in your family or somebody here that mattered a lot to you and your path to getting to this point? I haven't gotten too much time to think about it, but honestly, so I went back to my, um, I went back to my high school actually uh, after I got to visit with the Ravens uh, because it was right on the way back. So just getting to get back into my high school and talk to some of the kids there and talk to some of the teachers and just in general, like the, the community that I have back there, that's definitely something that I want to do um, because I think there's a lot of like gems that I could potentially give. Yeah. people to help them in their process and the biggest one that, that I had and that helped me um was that you never really have to compromise anything really so for me like when I came to Gilman my parents sent me to Gilman so I could become everything right I could become the the scholar the athlete um the the person in the community I could develop myself socially right and I think a lot of the time people are pressured by whatever force to go into one lane, to become an athlete, to become an academic, academician, anything like that. So my big thing was just like, you know, you can be a jack of all trades. There's nothing keeping you from that. You know, the limitations are either external or internal. And if, as long as you get rid of them, you can see yourself do a lot of different things in a lot of different lanes. That's awesome, man. That is awesome, right? And anybody that would be particularly worked up if it's Pittsburgh, is there anybody in your life that like, admittedly would say, dude, I'm happy for you, but there is no chance in hell I'm putting on one of those jerseys when I, when I come to see you play. You know, there probably are a lot of people that are like that. I don't yeah. know if they'd actually tell me that to my face, Okay, right. but, <laughs> but there might be some people like that in my life. They like secretly <laughs> would ask you for tickets and then show up and like definitely be wearing purple anyway. Correct. Correct. <laughs> like they'd be yeah, happy that, for that, you. That might happen. That might happen. Yeah, that might happen. Uh, Thomas, social media, where can people in this area be giving you a follow as you continue on this journey? Yeah, so for sure on Twitter, it's pretty easy um, at the Thomas Booker on Twitter. I just wanted Thomas Booker to be noticed, but they didn't have it available, so I had to go with the beat, um, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Man, you know, it's not, if you had, uh, unfortunately, you don't have one of those. Like, I, I'm Glenn Clark, so I know a thing or two about this. Right? <laughs> like, there's a few other people that share the same name. It's just the way that yeah. it goes, unfortunately. Yeah, so uh, on Twitter, yeah, the at the Thomas Booker. And then on Instagram, it's uh, T Books IV, T B. O O K S I V um, at um, at Instagram. So yeah, those are the, those are the two that I usually am on. Thomas, we are really thrilled for you, brother, and we can't wait to see how this plays out for you. My God, what a story it would be if it was Baltimore. But wherever it is, um, we will root for you. Uh, again, we won't promise if it's the Steelers, we ain't rooting for them. But we'll root for <laughs> you, right? We'll root for you and your success, and uh, you make a lot of people proud with everything that you've already accomplished and. Uh, no doubt what's coming for you as this moves on. Thank you for taking the time for us this morning, man. And best of luck as we move towards next week. All right, man. Thank you so much for having me. This is a fantastic interview. Wishing you the best of luck.